Hi everybody. Wow. Welcome back once again. Quite excited for this session. Quite a tricky question. Quite very interesting. So today we're going to be looking at calculus, right? Uh, from your grade top, that is your optimization of graphs. This is a new edition. All right, let's start by answering this question before moving to the actual quite interesting question, right? Uh, they are saying a farmer is a piece of land in the shape of a right angle triangle, OMN, and we can see it in the diagram. Um, he allocates a rectangular piece of land, PTOR, right, to his daughter. And we can see there's a rectangle there, giving a freedom to choose P anywhere along the boundary. MN. Okay, so uh, let OM equals to A, ON equals to B, right? I'm just going to indicate that quickly. Uh, let OM, that is the distance from O to M, is A. Uh, let me write this. Is A, then that other distance is what? Is B. Okay, so uh, and P is just any point um, on MN. Okay, so the first question, just basic questions, those ones. Uh, calculate the gradient of MN, right? So the symbol for gradient, small letter M, I want the gradient for MN. What do we use? Y at M minus Y at N divided by what? X at M minus X at N. Okay, what is our Y at M? It's 0 minus Y at N, it's B divided by x at m, which is a minus what is our x at n, it's 0. Okay, so if we simplify, our gradient will be minus b divided by a. Okay, all right, let's move to uh, Roman figure 2. Determine an equation of mn in terms of a and b. Okay, if you take a look at your MN in your diagram here, MN is actually a straight line. Can you see? So what's the standard form for a straight line? Y is equals to MX plus C. All right. So we know that the equation of a straight line, Y equals to MX plus C, where M represent your gradient and C represent your what? Your Y intercept. Okay. We already calculated the gradient of that line. So we, ch we can just go and substitute it, right? So the gradient is minus b over a x then plus c. Remember c is our y intercept. What is our y intercept? Our y intercept there is b. Can you see that b is our y intercept? So it's gonna be plus b. So this will be the equation of the grad of the line what y uh, I mean of mn. So I'm just writing y of mn and that's the equation in terms of a and B. All right. Okay. Uh, the Roman figure three calculate the midpoint of MN. So if I need the midpoint of MN, I'm just going to write MN here. What do we do? We say X at M plus X at N. Then we divide it by two, right? Um, this is a point Y at M plus Y at N then divided by two. So that's how we get the midpoint, right? So now our midpoint MN, it will be what is our X at M? It's 0, X at uh, M, it's A divided by 2. And then what is our Y at M is uh, 0, Y at uh, N, which is B, then divided by 2. So this will be simplified to be MN. The midpoint now will be A over 2 and what and b over 2 okay all right guys let's look at this uh, quite interesting last question um very very important for this session they're saying prove that the daughter's land will have the maximum area if she chooses p at the midpoint of mn all right uh we want to prove that this daughter's land i mean this rectangle here it's going to have a maximum area. Remember, the daughter has freedom to choose um, P anywhere along the boundary of MN, right? Then what we have to prove is that if she chooses P at the midpoint, then 
that area of the rectangle will be the highest, the maximum. So the key word here is maximum area. All right. Uh, so then you recall, oh, I'm maximizing area. So this is the application of calculus that is optimization. If we have to deal with minimizing something, minimizing shapes, maximizing shapes, cost, maximize, minimizing cost, maximizing profit, all those kind of things. We have to think of what? Application of calculus, optimization. And we have a session that we did on that application of calculus. I know quite a number of you struggle a bit with that topic. You can go and watch our session. I'm just going to put a link of that session on the description here. So that if you haven't watched it, you can just go and watch it. Application of calculus, quite an interesting and fairly easy, a bit tricky sometimes. Um, but um, just go and watch the session. You really um, understand it. Okay. How do I optimize something? Okay. That's that's the question. Mathematicians are, are, are quite interested also to say, oh, guys, how can we minimize cost? I mean, I have a business and I'm asking myself, how can I minimize uh uh, the cost so that I maximize the profit, right? That's application of calculus problem. So it's 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 real life thing, right? In this case, we want to see. Actually, they ask us to prove that um, this daughter's land is going to have a maximum area if she chooses P at the midpoint of M N. What is the question asking? That's the first question. What's what's the question asking? So they are saying. If she chooses P at the midpoint of MN, prove that her area will be maximum. Okay, so how do we prove that something is maximum? We have to first create an expression for that thing. Then we find the X values that will maximize. In this case, they have already told us those x values because they are saying prove that if she chooses p at the midpoint and we already have the midpoint right in the previous question we were asked to calculate the midpoint and we found it was a over 2 and what b over 2 in other words the question is asking you that prove that if x at p is equals to a over 2 then the area the area of the daughter will be maximum okay so that's basically what the question is asking because they are saying prove that the daughter's land will have the maximum area if she chooses p then we ask ourselves if she chooses p at the midpoint what is that x at the midpoint the x is a over 2 in other words we have to simply prove that if x if we can show them that x is equals to a over 2 maximizes the area then we would have proven that, oh, this, if she chooses P, which is uh, A over 2 and B over 2 at the midpoint, then she's going to have the maximum area. Okay, so we apply the, the same basic um, procedure of optimizing, something that we also did in the session we covered in application of calculus. Guys, if you haven't watched it, please and watch that session quite very important all right so let's let's go we now know what what to do if i show that x equals to a over 2 then i would have proved and and i show that when x is a over 2 the area will be maximum then we have we have proved that the area is maximum if she chooses p at um at at, at the midpoint all right so the same basic uh, procedure that we apply when we optimize what do we do the first thing we ask ourselves in every optimization problem you will see that is an optimization problem it won't be quite easy to see you will see it by the keywords maximum minimum whatever right so in this case there's a proof that it will be maximum area so we know it an optimization problem is application of calculus what's the first step the first step in every optimization problem is that you need to create an expression or write down an equation for something you want to optimize. In this case, we want to maximize the area of the daughter's land. It means we must first write down the equation for the area of the daughter's land. Okay, so the area for the daughter's land is the same as a rectangle, is the same as the length, which is your x and your breadth which is your y right 
so the area is the same as x y okay then after you write an equation for something you want to optimize what do you do you make sure that you express that equation in terms of a single variable why because we cannot derivate at some point we need to derivate right um, and you realize that if we have two variables at our point in grade 12 we can derivate this right it's when you go to varsity you learn how to derivate such kind of equation but in grade 12 if i have two variables i can't derivate there's no rule for that right so it means that i need to ensure that i express um, the other variable in terms of the other what i can do i can express y in terms of x or x in terms of y back on my diagram how can i do that okay you realize that y here it's actually a point y is is like the distance from r here to the top there right that is y but it's actually a point on the graph of y is equals to minus b over ax plus b can you see i mean we can now come and replace y by what minus b over a x plus b because uh, that's actually the dis if we measure that distance from there to there it goes straight to that line and that line has an equation y is the same as minus b over a x plus b we have calculated it in the previous question it means that i can now express the area in terms of a single variable where there is a y i can replace by what by minus b over a x plus b okay then i can get my area in terms of x now only then it will be minus b over a x squared plus bx can you see all right great now our area is expressed in terms of a single variable the next thing we can now what derivate someone might be asking why do we always have to derivate when we're dealing with optimization maximization and minimization okay recall this from your cubic function right if i have my cubic function like this i know this is the maximum and this is the what the minimum point at the maximum and the minimum we call them the stationary point we know that the first derivative is equals to zero first derivative is equals to zero so if we say first derivative equals to zero first derivative equals to zero and we solve for x those x values that we'll get will either maximize give us the maximum and will give us the x value at the minimum hence every time after creating an expression and we want to optimize it we have to derivate because we do know that at the first derivative that's where we get our maximum value that's when the first derivative is zero that's where we get our maximum value that's where we get also our what our minimum value so it's coming from that idea all right so now we can go and derivate this equation uh, a prime of x will be the same as uh, minus 2b over a i'm just taking 2 and multiply with my coefficient there then i subtract 1 on the exponent i'll just be left with x plus there's one one there if i say b times 1 is b x exponent 1 minus 1 x exponent 0 which is the same as 1 so it will be b times 1 which is just b okay after derivating i can equate my first derivative to what to 0 because i do know that um, i want to see which x value will maximize this area okay in other words i have to prove that the daughter's line would be maximum if she chooses p at the midpoint so that x value that i must show it must be x equals to a over 2 because that's in the midpoint of mn all right so i quit my first derivative to 0 then i go and solve for x right okay okay so now i have 0 equals to minus 2b over a x plus b i want to solve for x and find which x value will maximize this area okay i can take b to the other side i have minus b or i can take this one minus 2b over a x to the other side it will be 2b x over a is equals to b right so to solve for x i can uh, divide both sides by what by 2b over a right then divide here by 2b over a then 2b over a and 2b over a will cancel and then i'm left with x is equals to 
b divided by 2b over a let me just put it because i don't have space now let me put it somewhere on top here okay so x is equals to b divided by 2b over a then if i solve for x if i simplify that b if i change division to multiplication it will be a over 2b then b and b will cancel then x is equals to a over 2 can you see we have now shown that x is equals to a over 2 right then when x equals to a over 2 we do know that this is the x value that will maximize the what this area of the rectangle and you realize but this x equals to a over 2 it's actually in the midpoint of what of mn right so basically we have shown that actually if the daughter chooses p at the midpoint when x is a over 2 that is the midpoint that's the answer that will actually maximize this area and we can see that is the only x value that we are finding that will ensure that it will maximize the area so in other words we have shown that actually x equals to a over 2 and a over 2 is actually the midpoint of mn so you have to tell them x equals to a over 2 is actually the midpoint of mn so if she chooses uh, uh, p at the midpoint what will happen now she will get the what the maximum area okay i hope you find this helpful